Broken Sally was always thought to be a place of vice, a place of urban blight. And so city council always had it on their eye for a place to demolish. Got a reputation as being a black neighborhood, even though it was a mixed black, Italian, and Chinese neighborhood. But I got that reputation from all the black people who used to hang out here. I'm an artist, and history is one thing I use to make what I make. That white building is something called a Vice Chicken Shack, where a lot of jazz musicians used to go after playing downtown Vancouver. They weren't allowed to drink in the clubs where they played, so they come here uh, to have chicken and to party. Hey, Roy. How do, buddy? <laughs> yeah, you back in town. Just got back last night. This is a piece of interactive storytelling you can download to your phone and actually play like a game. As best we could, we try to make a historically accurate representation based on public record. Here's the Italian bootlegger. Here was a uh, Chinese brothel. How much you pay your girls? Hm. I'm not hiring. I make my work so I can see it. One major function of art is to allow us to see things we think we know in a different way. My first job after high school was uh, as an usher. My second job after high school was um, as a DJ. I was the first guy to play hip hop in, um, in, in Vancouver. I came to art late in life. I was more interested in theater. I realized early on that in Vancouver, these TV shows were being made, these movies were being made. So I could use the apparatus of, of cinema and, and TV to make my work. The last 10 years or so, I've made these sort of very elaborate, very free remakes of other works. I was researching the post-war period in Vancouver and realized from the images I was seeing that Vancouver was part of this film noir world. In Helen Lawrence, we're seeing two things simultaneously all the time the actors on stage and the cinematic image of the actors on the scrim. At first, it's very confusing. What's your name? But eventually, you learn Joe. to watch two things simultaneously. If I asked you to do a little something for me, you think you could do it? No questions asked on the uh, QT? We made virtual sets. We built the entire neighborhood of Hogan's Alley. We built two entire floors of Hotel Vancouver. No, take a walk. Come on. <laughs> We have the actors on a blue screen stage. They're being filmed by cameras. And then because we're in a blue background, that can be taken away digitally, like with a weatherman on TV, and another background can be uh, inserted behind them. What is happening is we're making this thing live. The cast is making a film in real time every night. Please don't spoil my fun. I haven't had much lately. I think I'll join you. You'll probably need a double. Helen Lawrence came from an epiphany I had about film noir. Somehow, the behavior of people in film noir was based on the trauma of war. The tough guys in femme fatales, they're actually desperate. They've done things that they're not proud of. Spare a cigarette, hon? Kill people, I see people die around to them. Ask you something. To help us all out, you... These themes of trauma, these are things which <gasps> I go back to again and again. I don't know why. You know, I think you would have been happy if I never came back. The fact that we can't really understand each other, that we're kind of locked inside our brains, this is something which I take as a starting point.
So behind me is the intersection of Abbott and Cordova. Uh, that's the, the setting for my, uh, my photograph, uh, Abbott and Cordova. But probably just above that P where the windows open is more or less the vantage point of, um, of my image. In the 1960s and early 70s, there were many hippies in Vancouver. So they decided to have a festival, and the cops didn't like this. Often with these, these works where I'm staging the photographs, there's obviously documentation of that moment. These documents do tell a story, but they're kind of partial. What I want to do is to be able to condense these ideas. We had to build a set. We need a lot of light to make that piece. Almost always, my works are allegories of the present as well. That event made this neighborhood what it is today. After that event happened, the city's interest in the neighborhood declined. There was a policy of containing drug use, vice, and poverty uh, in this neighborhood. My approach to looking at historical events is that historical events always have within themselves the possibility of having been something else. And the tension between different forces at play should not be forgotten. I often depict minor histories, but I always try to depict a local symptom of a global condition. So we're working on the soundtrack for a new uh, video installation piece. And this particular piece has uh, six video screens. And each screen will have a pair of speakers, so making eight speakers, which is what we've set up here. They're just trying to get a sense of how all the sounds work together in the space. This one is called The Secret Agent. It's completely different than anything that we've ever done before. That would be exciting, but it's also quite complicated in terms of the logistics of how are we going to mount this. Blow up the Marconi installation at Sazimbra. We'll get a miniature version of it up and running in Stan's studio for a while. What are you supposed to be anyway? Anarchist? Desperate communist? Anarchist? It plays back as a computer program, and so then we always run them for extended periods of time so that we know that they're stable for an exhibition. The Secret Agent was based on the notion of terrorism, which we're very concerned about these days, but it's been around for a long time. The Secret Agent it was the first literary depiction of, of terrorism, but it was depicting anarchists who were active in the late 19th century. A man was blown up at Sizimbra this morning. The terrorists I was looking at are more based in the 1970s. So this idea of uh, taking an existing narrative and restaging it in a way that reveals some hidden content there or takes it to a different context is something that has been a very huge uh, source of inspiration for me. Two of these are backwards. One should be backwards, right? Let's take a look. It may just be a little bit out. Yeah, sure. OK. I have nothing special to tell you. You suddenly interact. This one should go a little bit more to the next I think, too. How's that? Come on. Blow up the Marconi installation at Sazimbra. Then Secret Agent, there's six screens playing. Always at least two are playing simultaneously. There's more going on that you can actually pay attention to.
this kind of confusion is part of everyday life where we're not quite sure what's going to happen. What are you supposed to be anyway? Anarchist? Desperate? Calm. But in these works, a kind of parallax happens. I reminded him of our first encounter. We see stereo vision through parallax. Our left eye and our right eye allow us to see the same subject from slightly different points of view. This allows us to take in these two ideas simultaneously. So the narrative of the secret agent, if you think about what that meant in the 19th century, think about what that meant in the 1970s, this is the parallax through which we can view the same story in different ways. And when I walk in the crowd, I never let go of this. The squeeze actuates the detonator. And these things, of course, relate to what we have now. You see in a very real sense the consequence of terrorism of somebody saying to somebody else, I'm better than you, I know the way you should live, so much so that your life matters less than my act. A few weeks after it premiered, this terrorist bombing took place in Paris from people who were based in, uh, in and around Brussels. The show was shut down for many days because of terrorist fears. History does not repeat itself. Things do come back, symptoms do recur, but they often recur because what caused it in the first place never actually went away. In my work, I want to go back to look at these possibilities of what if it did not work out the way it did. So looking forward, looking back, I always want to consider that uh, the thing we have is not necessary. It's not the only way things could possibly be.